Welcome to Edwards Clinical Education and today we're looking at the application of Acumen Hypertension Prediction Index software and in this scenario looking at a fluid bolus intervention. Our patient today is 69 years of old and is having a laparoscopic right hemicolectomy and also a nephrectomy for a metasynchronous cancer. He has kidney disease stage 3 and hypertension and medication wise only takes Ramipril. As we start our simulation, uh, just to orientate ourselves, we have our basic patient monitor in the background showing our ECG, our invasive blood pressure monitoring from a radial arterial line and our saturations. In the foreground, we have our advanced hemodynamic monitor, our hemisphere, and the four parameters we're currently trending are our HPI, our hypotension prediction index, our mean arterial pressure, our stroke volume or SV, and our stroke volume variation, that's SVV, a measure of being preload responsive. As we start the simulation, uh, we can see our baseline parameters uh, looking in very fine shape. Our heart rate is 76. We have a normal blood pressure with a mean arterial pressure of 78, and the patient is well saturated. Our HPI is 22, and our mean arterial pressure, stroke volume, and SVV are all within normal ranges. So we have stability as we currently stand. But straight away into the simulation, what we see is that HPI or hypertension prediction index is now starting to increase. Now remember our HPI is the patient's likelihood of trending towards a hypotensive event. And that event is defined as a mean arterial pressure of less than 65 millimeters of mercury for greater than one minute. Now we are seeing a slight decline in our mean arterial pressure as well, but if we look at our delta HPI on our delta mean arterial pressure, we can see the HPI is much more responsive. Now HPI is now over 85, at which point an alarm or alert pops up and we can review the physiology in the secondary screen. If we review the physiology, our HPI is 90, so we're trending towards a hypertensive event. Blood pressure is still stable, stroke volume remains relatively unchanged, but in terms of physiology, we see that our SVV is 14 and our EADYNE is 1.4. Now, EADYNE is a potential measure of being preload or when you're preload responsive, being a pressure responder. Now, this patient we're going to allow to trend into hypotension to show the predictive effects of HPI. And in the meantime, we'll discuss what EADYNE is. EADYNE is our dynamic arterial elastance and defined as the ratio of our pulse pressure variation divided by our stroke volume variation. If certain criteria are met, then the EADYNE can predict whether a patient will increase their blood pressure to a fluid bolus. The criteria that have to be met include the patient must be preload responsive. In this case, our SVV is 14, so that criteria is met. The patient must be trending towards hypertension or be hypertensive. Our HPI is raised at 91 and we're about to be hypertensive, so that criteria is also met. And EADYNE has to be raised. By a raised EADYNE, we say EADYNE greater than 1 if the other criteria are met, will predict a patient who will be a pressure responder. However, it's important to remember there is a grey zone with EADYNE. It's approximately 0.8 to 1.2. Our hypertension prediction index remains high. We are now trending towards hypertension and have just dipped into hypertension. Now from when HPI was first raised at over 85 and the alerts came up, we've had approximately a three to four minute warning of impending hypertension. So high HPI told us that hypertension would occur before it actually did. Now we've given this individual now a fluid bolus and if we expect blood pressure to improve then we have to have a look at EADYNE and see whether all criteria are met again. Now remember just to refresh for EADYNE to be predictive of increasing your blood pressure to a fluid bolus the patient must be a preload responder SVV is raised, so that's met. Uh, they must be hypotensive, which they were, and EADYNE had to be greater than one, which it was. And hence, when we give a fluid bolus, we see HPI starts to drop almost instantaneously because we're putting stability back into the system and HPI reflects that. 
our mean arterial pressure has started to increase from uh, a low of approximately 62 or 63 millimeters of mercury up to 81 millimeters of mercury now. We've had a greater than 10% increase in our stroke volume. So in this scenario, the patient was preload responsive. So giving fluid has increased their stroke volume. And because EA dying was raised, that stroke volume has translated into an increase in our mean arterial pressure. Now in that scenario, we've allowed the patient to become hypotensive so that we can show the predictive ability of the hypertension prediction index and also to show the clinical utility of EA dying. What we can do in our clinical practice is intervene before the patient becomes hypertensive. By using or knowing that HPI warns us of the likelihood of hypertensive events happening, and by interrogating our secondary screen and the physiology underlying that instability, we can decide on the correct um, intervention to perform. So in the next scenario, we'll have a look at HPI once again, and this time intervene before hypertension occurs. And this is what we would do in clinical practice to avoid those repeated dips into hypertension that we know over the course of a long procedure can add up to duration that is associated with patient harm. So our HPI once again is now increasing. And once again, the difference between our delta HPI and our delta map needs to be emphasized. The relative changes in HPI are much more substantial than the changes that we see in map that is still within a normal clinical range. Once again, our HPI uh, is above the threshold of 85 and above 85 HPI will start to alarm and we can interrogate the secondary screen. We know that we are trending towards hypertension because HPI is raised. There is no significant change in our other parameters, our conic output, our pulse or our stroke volume. But we can see that the patient is preload responsive. HPI, SVV is raised at 19 and our EA dyne is 1.0. So the three criteria for EA dyne to predict if a patient will be preload responsive and pressure responsive are now complete. So if we give this individual a fluid bolus as we are here, and at this scenario, we're still not hypertensive, we've intervened before hypotension has occurred. And by doing that, we managed to avoid a hypotensive episode. HPI is now starting to decrease, our mean arterial pressure is on the rise, and our stroke volume is also starting to increase. The patient still remains preload responsive, SVV is raised at 18, but as the fluid bowls continues to enter the circulation, that will continue to drop on our stroke volume and our pressure will continue to rise. So in the first scenario, we allowed the patient to become hypertensive. In this scenario here, we've used HPI in the clinical context that it's supposed to be. And that is to give a warning of the likelihood of trending towards a hypertensive event and to intervene before that hypotensive event occurs. And once again, it's important to reiterate, we do not treat HPI as a number. We do not treat the hypertension prediction index. That is merely a warning of an event that's about to occur. What we do treat is the underlying physiology that is causing that instability. And in these cases, it has been that the individual is preload responsive. And by looking at EA dying, we know that giving fluid will not only increase stroke volume, but it will also increase our mean arterial pressure. We can also use EA dyne to decide whether the intervention we're about to give is the correct intervention or not. We can use EA dyne not only to tell us whether giving fluid will increase the blood pressure, we can also use EA dyne to see whether giving fluid will have no effect on blood pressure, and hence stopping us from giving an intervention that doesn't have the desired effect that we want. Once again, if we look at EA dying, we see it starting to increase from our baseline of 28. Uh, and so we've been stable for the last couple of minutes and it will slowly start to increase in just a moment. Our underlying physiology uh, is looking relatively normal. Our maps in the 80s, our good stroke volume at 66, so back to our baseline values, and the patient is not a preload responder in this case. <laughs> 
Once again, HPI starts to increase. And once again, we emphasize the delta HPI versus the delta map. HPI is changing substantially, whereas mean arterial pressure remains within a normal clinical range. Once again, we'll be over 85 relatively shortly, and HPI will start to alarm, telling us that the likelihood of being hypotensive is really rather high. And so at this point, once again, we have to look at our secondary screen and the underlying physiology to decide what the correct intervention will be. And so the question is, will fluid help in this scenario? When we think about the criteria that make EA Dine valid for predicting a pressure responder, they are trending towards hypotension, HPI is raised. They are a preload responder, SVV is raised at 17, but EA Dine is below one. And therefore, the criteria for EA Dine predicting whether a patient will increase their blood pressure or not are not met. So when we give this individual a fluid bolus, which we're about to, then giving the fluid bolus will increase the stroke volume because the patient is preload responsive with raised SVV. But because EA Dine is less than one and currently it's 0.5, then that increase in stroke volume will not lead to an increase in blood pressure. So this individual will continue to trend towards hypertension. Whilst fluid may have been needed to improve the cardiac output or the stroke volume, that fluid will not increase the mean arterial pressure. And we can see now we're about to dip into hypertension with our mean arterial pressure about to drop below 65 millimeters of mercury. So in this scenario, by looking at the physiology previously, we knew that a fluid bolus would not improve our blood pressure before we ever gave it. So EA Dine in this context helps us to rationalize whether the intervention we think is correct will have the effect that we want. By giving a fluid bolus, we have improved stroke volume, but we have not increased our blood pressure, and therefore we must look to other parameters to help us decide what the correct intervention is. So EA Dine predicts pressure responsiveness when patients are preload responsive. The optimal cutoff for EA Dine in terms of predicting a pressure responder is 1.0, but there is a gray zone of between 0.8 and 